Hello, everybody. I'm Veronica Sarin. I'm the head of marketing here at Gather, and welcome to one of our template offices here in the world of Gather. You can see Liz is sitting at the desk right next to me, and her avatar is hard at work. You can also see that right above me, if you decide to enter one of these template offices and spin up a office space of your own, you can actually go over here where my avatar is pointing at the wall. And if you press X, you have the opportunity to upload your logo. Right now in this space, what we're going to be doing today is talking through how to have great meeting on gather in your virtual office. So what I'm going to be doing is sharing a great article right that we now. have on our blog called The Hero's Guide to Great Meetings on Gather. And Liz, if you have completed all the different setup bits that we need for a live stream, you can click over into where I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, it's actually sharing for me already. Hi, everybody. I'm Liz, head of community at Gather. Uh, like Veronica said, I'm just making sure all the buttons are working. So welcome, welcome. Excellent. All right, so this article here, The Hero's Guide to Great Meetings on Gather, can be found on our blog. It's a lot of fun, and we wanted to walk through the article and show you how some of these things can be put together in practice in your own Gather office space. So are you ready, Liz? Yep, on, just a second. I'm going to mute you on the other screen. Yep. Go-kart, definitely. We'd love more go-karts. So yes, I have shared um, the article actually in the chat. So if anybody wants to follow along in their book. Yeah, follow <laughs> along in your book, ladies, gentlemen, and people of LinkedIn. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go on a journey here. So um, I know that we walked through all of this in our little script ahead of time, Liz. Mm -hmm. but I think what we can do actually is... Go ahead and scroll up, actually. Yep. So this article is broken down into three sections, and we call those, you know, your quests, essentially. Um, setting yourself for success. Oh, that is zoomed. Setting yourself up for success, setting your space up for success, and then setting your meeting attendees up for success as well. So the first part we're going to talk about is linking your Google Calendar. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually drop in a link to our help center that actually walks you through the entire thing. Um, also, feel free to check out this article just in general, because what that will do is actually uh, link you to all the resources that we're going to be sharing within um, the actual stream today. So do you want to talk about the Google Calendar integration? Yes. So in your space, and I'll talk about this verbally, but Liz, you may need to show on your screen mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. In the lower right-hand corner of your space, you should see a calendar button. Yep. That button allows you to link your Google identity with the calendar in Gather. And so what you'll see is your calendar will get pulled in and we're actually in a template space right now, so I don't know if you'll be able to... Work. It's actually displaying the same thing that's in the photo where I would sign in with my Google account. So that's the first part. Cool. Okay. So then what will happen is if you actually go through and link it, it'll literally pull in your Google Calendar, all the titles of the meetings, all of the attendees of the meetings, they've linked up their calendar. And so what's really important to make your virtual space into a thriving office space where you can have productive meetings, is you have to have everybody in your space over time connect their calendars so that you can look at the different things that are going to be happening across the day. Mm -hmm. This will also allow for you to have some in-space notifications five minutes in advance of the meeting. And if you install the Gather Meetings Chrome extension, which is shown here. And I will also now, drop that in here too, because installing that's a great idea. I'm actually going to pull it up here. This is what it'll lead to. You'll see this in the Chrome Web Store, the entire ability to install this extension. And when you have this extension, what you'll be able to do is add in links that go directly to the space that has enough capacity for the number of invitees that you have. Mm -hmm. When you click on the link in your calendar, once it's in there, 
It'll take you straight to the space. So it's a one-click enter into the space, enter into that meeting space. And we'll actually show you what those meeting spaces can look like when you use either a template office like the one that we're in right now, or any office that you might be in that you update and customize to suit all your own needs and your own company's culture. So um, I'm gonna go down here. So this is you installing the Chrome extension. This is the phenomenon it'll enable. Um, this is another little bit here about checking your audio and video before you join a space. Obviously we're in a space right now. And so I would need to spin up a new one to show you what it's like. But I can actually go ahead because right down here, it says within the space, you can actually check that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up so you guys can see. Uh, so I can go here, I can change my character, make sure I can go ahead and edit that. I can also just make sure that I look okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, and make sure I can make any adjustments. Awesome. So that's there, whether you want to check your hair straight in the office or when you join. And when you do join, this is the view that you'll get. You'll be able to edit your character, make sure that your audio and video settings are all set. And then you can just go from there. All right. So now we're going into setting up your space. Let's real quick make sure, like, if anybody has any questions about any of this or need any resources linked, I'm more than happy to put those into the chat. Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and move on to creating a variety of meeting areas in your office. Um, should we go see a one on one area, a room for small groups? a full team or department, entire company, and then co-working between teams. I'll pull up that list on my screen so we can keep those going. Um, Great, you want me to stop sharing my screen? You can go ahead and stop sharing your screen and, and request me to follow, and I will follow you to uh, a one-on-one -on -one space. All right, requesting to lead. And this is what it looks like if somebody wants to make you follow them or force that yourself to follow them. <laughs> I have accepted. Excellent. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is show the space for a one-on-one. -on -one. So let's say you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with somebody. The Gather Chrome extension and Google integration will probably pull you into a space where you can actually have that, or you can just walk over to a one-on-one -on -one space. It'll be perfectly private, especially if you use one of these templated spaces. Those are already built in, but if you open up your build view in the lower right-hand corner, you can also create your own spaces that satisfy each of these. So Liz, I'm gonna walk over into here and this should be a one-on-one -on -one space, okay? Okay. All right, so here we are in our one-on-one -on -one space, which the template names succulent one-on-one -on -one in this private area. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, Liz, can you show the features, maybe zoom in a little bit, show that it's a different color and then those bits in the current area and the things you can do. Yeah, so as you can see, we're lit up in this small area right here. The dark area is around it. It shows where people, uh, we're in this space, only people in this space can hear us. So we can also lock the, this room as well um, if we would like to make sure we have some privacy. So under the particip participants tab, there's a little lock button right here. And so we can go ahead and close that off. So no one, even if somebody tried to enter the space, they just bounce out. Uh, Veronica, why don't you step out of the space and I'll lock it so we can show what it looks like if somebody tries to enter when it's locked. One little call out, you and I have both spotlighted ourselves for convenience for the live stream, yes. but people can't, I can't hear what's going on in the space when I come out, unless you're spotlighted, which we are right now. That's little mm -hmm. orange in the corner, but I'll step out. So I go ahead and locked it. Go ahead and try. Veronica cannot come in. So if you're having a private conversation or discussing sensitive information, you gotta make sure that nobody can come in here and interrupt your meeting. And this works with any kind of area, a larger area, not just a one-on-one. -on -one. This can be for any kind of space that you have um, that you need some privacy and that will be under the participants tab. So you can oh, come okay. back. Welcome there back. We Excellent. All right, show that you can do the link and then um, maybe even editing the area. Sure. So here's the link. Link's copied. I can go ahead and share that to anybody who I need to invite after it's copied here. And then I can also edit the area. So if I want to change the name of it from succulent to one-on-one, one-on-one to uh, 
not succulent one-on-one -on -one, and the max <laughs> occupancy is one, um, I can actually control like, this could be a single person a meeting or it could be a two person meeting, but as you can see, there's two seats. So we probably wanna keep it to just the two. So go ahead and confirming those changes. And so when Google Cal or um, when we pull from there, uh, the will place you in a room that's appropriate for the size. So when you're building out your space, make sure that you set those and set the names of your private areas as well so that I can pull that out. But you can also use the build tool here to like we said, um, have different types of rooms. As you can see that this is our map size. This is where you can actually shrink or grow your space if you need to, depending on how many people you'd like. But this is where you'd go in and actually create these edits uh, to make a little customized space for yourself. Awesome. So this is a one-on-one -on -one space. Mm -hmm. Let's head over to a place in this template office where you can have a small group. And it's actually right over here. So I'm going to follow you. Excellent. Uh, it, no, well, Got it? Couldn't find my target path. Here. Uh, follow. Got it. Great. I was just going to head over here. Yep. All right. And we have a close door option here. So just yeah. interacting with X and close it. And that allows you to have some privacy. If you need to say, hey, door is closed. Please don't come in. Yeah. It's a level of, of privacy because like the meeting has already started. It communicates to your team like, hey, if I'm entering this space, I can't just come in, start blasting my music rude in front of everybody else in all hands. <laughs> I may or may not have done that. Yeah. So but if you want that extra layer of security, you can go ahead and hit this little lock here. And when everybody leaves, it will unlock. So don't don't worry about that part. Right. So here we're in a small group meeting room. Um, and is that a crystal and a, with a crystal ball? That's interesting. Oh, yeah. And so this would be good for like marketing team or for a sub department, that kind of thing. In our own space, if you watched our live stream from last week, we actually showed y'all what our space looks like and we customized it a ton. The template offices come like this and you have some really cool options for that within the template, but you can also change this up. You can add in different bookshelves. You can add in new, I mean, Liz was showing you all the different options that you can pull up on build. Mm -hmm. Why don't you pull up some items and decorate the space a little bit? I also so, just shared in the chat as well, different meeting formats that remote teams can use on gather. You can use in this space. So let's look okay. at what do we want to add in here? Um, we like bonsai trees. We like bonsai trees. We really like bonsai trees. So look, it's just this simple, a uh, boop, a boop, 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 boop. Great. So now we've customized this space to be our dark library bonsai tree space. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename it dark library, dark bonsai library. That's not how you spell bonsai. Is it? B-O-N-Z-I. C-A-I. S-I-A. S-I-A. Wow. No wonder why I failed Japanese. Bonsai. Yeah. Come on. Fun come fact. On, <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've done a small group space, what should we check out next? A uh, full team or department meeting? Okay. So small teams like a marketing team or a specific sub department could probably use a space like this, mm -hmm. but you can also go this way. If we wanted to look for a space that is more for like a like a larger larger team, larger department. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Oh, actually, and you'll see by the way, we were going past these desks. These are all private areas themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's a person desk that can be their own space. And that pops up on the bottom. It has a you've entered a private area. Yeah. Oh, this is okay. a good one. Yes. This is great. So um, we were actually doing some work in here before and creating some GIFs and uh, some of these items are interactable and just have some generic ideas for things you might want to put in your uh, in your meeting spaces. But yeah, this is this is for a full team or a department. Mm -hmm. And the next one we have on the list is the entire company. Yes. So let's go check out like the all hands area. Cool. 
All right. And as we're going over there, um, th again, I keep saying this, this is their template office. So you can pull this up yourself. You can start to edit it yourself. In our office, we have really creative meeting rooms. We have big items in there. We'll customize items ourselves. We've seen that in a lot of our customers' offices as well. And those can be really exciting and very inspiring. Okay, we're going into the all hands room. Let's go. Okay. This is an all hands room. This is where different people can sit over here, can sit at different couches. And if I wasn't okay. already spotlit, this would show me, this would do what the effect that you're seeing on Veronica with the little megaphone with the orange. This allows her to speak to everybody in the room and be heard across the entire room, regardless if she's in a private space down here. Like for example, she's in here, she can lock this space and have a private conversation with her team. But at the same time, because I am spotlit, we will still be hearing it. So it allows for, you know, breakout groups, easy conversation, but then also like able to feel a little bit more closer to your team where you can lean over and have a quick like, hey, oh, we need to actually follow up on that type of conversations while these meetings are happening. 100%. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show in this template office. Okay. I, I re-spotlit you, Liz, because when you enter these spaces, I think it, it goes off. I see. Um, but over here, you can add in your logo. Yeah, your logo here. And so we go ahead to X and you can upload, click or drag an image here. Um, so yeah, to customize, make people feel like they're, you know, at home, at their home office um, and part of it. So yeah, you can customize it and whatever you'd like up there. Excellent. All right. So we went over what it looks like to have a one-on-one -on -one space, mm -hmm. how you make the areas private, how you lock them for small groups or for a department. We're looking at what it's like to be here for an entire company. Now let's go over to what it's like to do co-working among teams. So I think we go to the rooftop. Ooh, I like it up there. Let's go. All right, awesome. Okay. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Okay, um, can I see you? There we go. Hello. Here we go. Yeah, rooftop. Template so often come with these attached, which are fantastic. So just taking everybody a look around. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can see oh. it's a pretty big space. Um, and like every single one of these rugs are, you know, again, private areas. Um, as you can see here, we have a little space and where it has like the spotlight. So if you need to talk to the entire room, you can do so. Um, there's a lot of, you know, a you know, little mock bar, coffee bar area here for more social conversations. But then you also have, again, like little one-on-one -on -one spaces that you can grab people from your team or even a larger one for co-working with different departments over on the left-hand side of the map. Um, but I personally like the fire pit because it has fire pit sounds. Check it out. It should. I think I may have accidentally disabled that before we actually. <laughs> <laughs> so something super fun you can customize. If things have sounds, you can turn them on and off. That was totally part of the educational process at this stream. There was no uh, hiccup there whatsoever. Excellent. But yeah. So usually on map, I, I was making some changes earlier today and I think I, I disabled the sound. So. Usually some of these items have built-in sounds, including the fire pit, which, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try to actually include that now, Liz. Okay, um, great. Can you go through the rest of the article? Sure. That we've already covered. I want to make sure everybody knows what we're talking about here. Yeah. So I want to go ahead and share my screen. Maybe. All right. <laughs> Get back into the heroes, guys. So this is what we kind of went over just recently here. Uh, we talked about the different types of office spaces. We talked about setting names and occupancy for meeting room areas. Um, create two co-working areas, quiet and social. Um, people work differently. And some people like to have quiet time and need to have that to focus, which is someone like myself. Um, and then one that is meant for socializing, which is more Veronica style. Um, so having those areas like here, you know, designated for that type of work also creates another way of nonverbal communication for your needs within the office. If I'm in a quiet space, people know 
that's what I'm communicating out and that's what I'm trying to achieve during that time. If I'm in more of a social space, like over by that coffee bar, people know that I'm open to talk while I'm doing these things. So there's different ways that you can activate these kind of like nonverbal cues with different space building, different types of items that are surrounding you and so on. So like if you're sitting in a library with a fireplace and the door is closed, Veronica will still kick the door open, but she knows that she needs to be quiet when she does enter. But if I'm going to approach her at the coffee bar, I know that I need to be prepared for a conversation. Right. So also add collaborative objects and spaces like whiteboards and Pomodoro time timers. Um, I think what we're going to... Hmm? I can add some of those. Let's try yeah. some of those. So I'm going to talk about those real quick, showing you on here. Uh, you have a whiteboard, you can mark out your objectives, and then also like these different uh, timers where there's different types of techniques that pair with co-working spaces to keep people focused and encouraging breaks, like conversations for social and just interacting with each other in a more natural way. So I'm gonna pop out here and let's see, oh, we have the timer and then we also have the the whiteboard. So, so I just added those in. You literally can just drop them in from the build pool. Mm -hmm. She and just um, went here. And then here's the whiteboard right there. And this is actually where the Pomodoro timer is. And so, yeah, I can just start creating a whiteboard, select a drawing tool. Hi. I'm going to use it. I'm going to go ahead and hear Hello, Hi. That's my terrible smiley face. So this allows us for to collaborate here together on this. And I'm going to head over to the Pomodoro timer. Veronica, what kind of techniques do you usually use for those timers? So, um, by the way, come back into this space and you'll hear the fire. I turned it back on. Yeah. <laughs> All Let's right. See. So Pomodoro timer, if you open it up right now, it's the cuckoo one. Um, basically what you can do is say, all right, we're gonna work for this period of time and that's shared and then we'll take a break for this period of time and that's shared. And usually with typical Pomodoro techniques, you'll do 25 minutes worth of work, heads down, five minute break. You do that four times, so that'll take you across two hours. And then after doing two hours worth of work, you can take a 15 minute break. So that's one of the breakouts that's pretty common when people use the Pomodoro technique. It's extremely common among people who are studying, so students, or if you're really trying to chip away at a big project that you're just working on on your own. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's good for if you and your team members are chipping away at different work streams individually and you want to just use this as a central way to look at what you're doing together and feel that sense of camaraderie while you have your heads down. So that's usually why I like the Pomodoro technique, but candidly I use it a lot more when I was a student many, many moons ago than I do as a person leading a team in this company where I feel much more compelled to do active collaboration like this. Yeah. So but if that's the thing that you want in your team, or if that's a function of what you got, then by all means, Pomodoro technique is right here for you. So you would you like to go back to sharing your screen for me? Shall I share the hero's guide? Yes. So we did the uh the Pomodoro timer. So we now the next step is setting your meeting attendees up for great meetings on Gather. Let's talk about creating an agenda. Yes. All right. So creating an agenda, as it says here in the Heroes Guide, this is sort of meeting for one. But you'd be surprised in the general working sphere how many people don't have agendas. Usually at Gather, we do have that best practice of pulling together some agenda ahead of time. We see that that's what works best for clients. But if you have a recurring meeting, what's really great to do is actually have an item in your space where you embed a recurring meeting agenda that people can add to in advance. So just as Liz went over here to the whiteboard and added in a whiteboard, you can also embed a Google Sheet or um, a Figma board, if it's something that your team collaborates on. And that can be the very thing that you open up in your space week to week and have in the place where you have your meetings. So that's the agenda. And that's a really great little pro tip here pro that tip. we have. All right. Inviting everyone that should be in the meeting. I mean, like, yeah, but what's really great about Gather is it's not just this 
individual calendar link where you're opening up a desktop app and everybody's sort of just boxed into their little boxes. When you invite people into a meeting on Gather, you're inviting them into a shared space. And you're more importantly, inviting them into a space, an area nook within that shared space. And so this is where you can actually feel that spatial awareness together and make that space your own. So when you invite everyone that's in the meeting, it's super easy. Like I said, there's the Chrome extension. There is the ability to integrate your calendar. There's the ability to just go straight to where you need to be in the space based on the notifications that pop up. And when you click on that invite from your calendar, you do go straight to that space also. Mm -hmm. And using the participants tab, like we don't have a meeting currently set here, but if Veronica was somewhere in the space, I can request her to join me here at the fire pit. Um, I can also locate her and figure out where she is if I want to go and invite her in person. <gasps> Walk up and be like, hey, do you want to come over and have this discussion with me? No way. Yeah, totally possible in the space, which is great. Um, and as you can see in this little graphic here, in our space, which we showed in last week's live stream, we have a lot of different name spaces that we've all customized to be our own. But you can see here, the customer experience team is in this space and we'd be able to see, oh, Jasmine's over there. I'm gonna go walk over to Jasmine. Oh, Eli and Andrew are having a one-on-one -on -one in the bonfire note. I probably shouldn't bother them right now, but maybe when they're done, I can go talk to Eli. Mm -hmm. the kind of thing. And it also notes the capacity of the space that you're in. Yeah. All right. Using meeting view to keep everyone focused. Let me go into meeting view to keep us focused. Yeah, excellent. All right, so meeting view allows you to still see what's going on in the office a little bit, mm -hmm. but it really allows you to, yeah, stay focused on the fact that you are indeed in this meeting with these people. You see a larger view of them. You can see their screen a little bit better. You can click into each of these views, or if I want, I mean, Liz, you can click into my face and just have a giant view of my face if you want. I do. Excellent. <laughs> Back to the screen share. <laughs> Great, cool, back to the screen share. But you have a flexible view within our platform that allows you to be focused, but then excited about what's going on alongside everybody else. Okay, sharing your screen or multiple screens. This is one of the best features of Gather among many other features that are great. I'm sharing my screen with you right now. I'm walking you through this blog because it's got a lot of great content. But if Liz also wanted to share something on one of her screens, like meeting formats on Gather, you can actually click around all of these different screens and videos and put them side by side if need be. What this is really great for, we hear from clients and customers, this is really great for hair programming. If you're an engineer, you can see what's going on on other people's screens while you're in this shared space together. Um, and so having that multi-screen sharing ability also allows you to be like, flexible and not be like, oh, wait, can you stop sharing your screen and then open up this? It's a nice little feature that I think we sometimes take for granted because it's just really easy for us to do here mm -hmm. at Gather. Okay, that's sharing your screen or multiple screens. No more asking each other for permission to take over the screen, so true. Okay, finally here we've got choosing an engaging meeting format. Liz pulled up all these ideas about how you can really get people together bonding either for fun or with the name of productivity in mind. We have a lot of different things that we've seen from customers that work uniquely on Gather to getting people together and having great meetings. So you should definitely check out that article if you haven't already. Let me go and ahead and pull it up and we can see what's inside. Or you can go ahead and click through it to it. Let's go ahead. Meeting ideas. It was the thing I was literally just sharing. Go back here. Excellent. Yeah, you were just sharing it. He's literally the just sharing that. <laughs> so go through here. Um, we have a fishbowl idea. Um, Morgan and I, one of our team members on the marketing team, actually went and visited Love and Tech, and they had this amazing eye idea about holding a fishbowl meeting. Um, the inner circle includes people participating in the conversation, while the outer circle includes people listening to the conversation. I thought it was a really interesting way to communicate those nonverbals again of like, who's speaking, who should we should be listening to, what's the purpose of the meeting. Um, and it really creates that like normal structure and like behavioral things that you need while you're having um, different types of meetings. Um, the run and approve and disapprove exercise. Um, 
you just physically move your avatar into the different <laughs> areas. Like when you think about it, it's like instead of just saying yes or no, like you're actually taking an action. And I think that actually hits a different part of your brain of like, instead of being like, yes, no, or whatever, you actually having to use your keyboard to move yourself to one side or the other actually makes you consider things a little bit more deeply. Yeah. The idea here also is that an announcer will say, hey, do you agree with this idea? Or do you disagree with this idea? And then you can really dig into it. And it creates a visual. Like if there's yeah. 15 people in here and there's two people on the approved side, that communicates visually very quickly that maybe you should rethink what you're asking them. <laughs> maybe you should reconsider your decision. Yeah, maybe reconsider your life choices. Yeah. Um, create a debate space. Veronica, would you like to talk about debate? Uh, it's why it's not my specialty. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think you're good at it. This one is is pretty straightforward, but it's basically by having these visual cues, you can say, all right, you're on this side and you're on this side. And you can use this as an icebreaker or it can be a way in which you're having a discussion for work. Mm -hmm. um, this next one, getting to know your coworkers. Speed dating with coworkers. This one is much more about being able to break the ice. And you can't see this in this view, but just like how you may have seen Liz and I being in those one-on-one -on -one spaces, when we've seen this broken out in this way, it's individual one-on-one -on -one space. You can't hear what the other people are talking about. Mm -hmm. And so not everybody's in this space where it's just a much bunch of mush and everybody's talking. These are individual conversations. And you set up a speed date and get to know you session properly, you can have these conversations and really get to know everybody one on one so that no one's nervous in the larger group, which can happen. And it's also a uh, template that's available within Gather if you want to do like a speed gathering type event. Right on. Reflect with rosebud or thorn room. Uh, this, this one is very similar to agree or disagree, mm -hmm. but it's a good icebreaker. I just like that it looks like an RPG. It definitely looks like an RPG. Mm -hmm. I like and it. bring everybody Girl. to uh, in all hands. This is actually the exact template that we were just in. Um, yes. And we also walk through it like people can sit at these tables and sit together and pen important documents and objects through the space. Use the spotlight title, which both Veronica and I have right now. And then tackling lots of topics with a world cafe. Yeah, this one is much more about if you've been in a, in a physical offsite with team members, sometimes what you'll do is you'll be in groups to talk about these topics. And here you have that same visual format. It's like, all right, everybody over here wants to talk about the product roadmap. You can come over here. Everyone who wants to talk about internal communications, come over here. Community culture, come over here. And people can shift around depending on how you set up the exercise. Mm -hmm. But it's really good for an offsite kind of format or a reflector format. And All ditch right, the meetings favorite. for casual co-working. This is actually the customer experience Koi Pond. Yes, in our office. In our office. They office where they actually all do casual co-working. Usually mm -hmm. if you find somebody who is on the customer experience team, you just walk over there and you can hang out with them. And sometimes it's silent. Sometimes it's just having that shared sense of presence. Other times it's full-blown conversation, but it's just like you would be in a real office. Mm -hmm. And this is actually like our little quiet co-working space. Yeah, and this is meant for co-working with less conversation. But that's a rule from our office, and that's very different from how different folks may set up their offices. These are just some ideas for what you can adopt. But remember, you can always use a template like this one and use that as a basis so you don't have to overthink the design and at least have something to get started. I personally can't design things when it comes to space, whether it's a physical, real life Thing, or it's in a video game or it's in a virtual space like this. It's just not my jam. Can't relate. Out. Can't Liz, relate. Is much better at it. Liz is much, much better at it and gets much more excited about that. For me, it's much more about the functionalities. I love that. I love the fact that you have a little fire pit. I like that. I also love the all hands rooms and all the features and some features that you have in there. But when it comes to making a space really authentic for your culture and the things you want to portray or enjoy with your team members, that's a different skill set in my opinion and I admire people who have that yeah and it's also why like our templates are so important for like 
For me, it creates inspiration to make, be more creative. And for people like you, it adds the function with the layer of creativity so you can also enjoy it as well. 100%, yes. All right, so we went through the Hero's Guide to Great Meetings. Mm -hmm. We talked with y'all about how this all shows up in a space. We walked through the types of things that you just need to install in one click so that you can enjoy all the functionality of meetings on Gather. We also showed you how all of those things come together in the space itself and how you can create a different variety of meetings in your office accordingly. Mm -hmm. And of course, we also walked through different meeting ideas that you can have here on Gather that are quite unique to this platform. Mm -hmm. All yeah, right. I think we did it. And it's also Friday afternoon. So oh, yeah. we should hit the Friday button. Friday button. If you press F, you get a bunch of confetti. Hit the Friday button. And there may or may not be additional things lighting up on our uh, releases next week that have to do with how you can react to space. That's so awesome. Watch this. Watch oh. this space. No pun intended. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Um, if anybody has any questions, we're more than happy to take them. Um, I've gone ahead and shared this uh, the links in the chat. So if there's any questions that you have, and also if there's anything that you guys want to see when we're actually doing these streams, uh, we're going to have some more coming later, some really great ideas we're really excited about. Um, so do let us know if you have any recommendations or suggestions or just things that you're curious about. Um, feel free to go ahead and just leave a comment. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody. Um, again, uh, for spending your time with us on a Friday afternoon or Friday evening or wherever you are. Friday morning, yeah. Wherever you are, because it's the beauty of Gather, you can be anywhere. But yes. again, um, I'm Liz. I'm Veronica. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Take care, y'all.